Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of Europe Universalis 4. First come, first serve. Achievement run in the new Right of Man DLC. As you can see, we're doing an update video in 1680, and I have progressed a little. I have cornered off North America, so no foreign powers can colonize it. I have the northwest of South America, and I have some land on the eastern coast, so that's awesome. Um... And let's just hop into uh, the uh, the view as you are uh, into the tabs. You can look to the tabs. As you can see, we are a great power and we are number one at that. We are number one. Then France, Commonwealth, Ottoman, Spain, Ming, Russia, and England. We have the most development of anyone on this list. And we actually have no tech penalty. I just recently got the most recent institution, which was the manufacturies, which a uh, tip for um if you need to um institute the manufacturers if you build mad i keep saying manufacturers over and over and over and over <sighs> if you build manufacturers in your provinces those provinces the um they how do how do i say this uh, um they tick up much quicker like let me look at a province here like the rate at this at which this ticks up if there was a like a plantation like he would be if the ottomans built a plantation which is a manufacturer here it would increase the speed at which the manufacturers would become present in the um in the institution so that's something good to know and they're also just very good like it increases your income increases your production overall very good gives you more money even though they do cost a lot but as you start to build more and more of them they start to pay off for themselves and you can start building more and more of them so that is nice but anyway let's look through the tabs we are a ground console uh hancock uh basically a republic we are a uh, empire rank at that which means we get a cultural union which you can see at the bottom there a cultural union due to being a great republic being a kingdom rank or sorry empire rank which means all the cultures in the british coat the british group british culture group are accepted so as you can see before only american and pohanti which i promoted to be a culture was accepted now the other three cultures in the british culture group are now automatically accepted and they do not take up promoted culture slots which is very nice uh, and as you can see, I am an administrative republic. So in addition to all these positive modifiers I get for being an empire rank, which is, as you can see, production efficiency, the modern, modern, monthly autonomy change, the years of separatism, diplomats, leaders without upkeep, number of states and nation, national focus cooldown, I get local unrest, I get local tax modifier, and I get local manpower modifier, and I get local sailors modifier, which is very nice. As for diplomacy, I have no allies. I do have a shit ton of uh, Cassus allies to use against people, though. Especially when I'm gonna need to take over these um these countries here in um in North America. As for the economy, I make more from production. Like I said, I've been building a lot more um what's the word um manufacturing, so that increases my. Uh, let me see. Let me not get this wrong. It increases my goods produced, which. Well, let me go to where a manufacturer is. Oh, I don't want to build one here. It increases my goods produced, which is this is the goods produced. And that I assume, I think, not sure, don't hold me to it. Uh, that um, those goods produced then come back to me as income basically hopefully i didn't confuse you by explaining it anyway manufacturers good just remember that um we make second highest from taxation then trade and then gold as for trade we make 17 ducats don't really focus on trade basically some collecting trade here people in downstream nodes sending trade upstream basically that's what i am doing <laughs> i'm not really paying attention to trade even though it probably would make me more money secondly 
as you can see, I am most up to date on all the institutions. The next and last institution is going to be Enlightenment, which should fire in 20 years. So that's going to be interesting. I am behind on technology because to to be able to embrace the institution quicker, I've been developing provinces. Let me go to development map mode. As you can see, I've developed all these until they're green. So 38, 35, 35, 31. These are each one for each one of the um, institutions I had to get by developing. You don't have to develop. I should mention you don't have to develop for the for the um, the. Let me go to the thing. You don't have to develop for the global trade, but I developed for global trade, so it'll be here quicker. It was just gonna take forever for it to take up. Like I think it's like plus zero point zero five for it to take up, even though I had a marketplace. As you can see, there's a bunch of modifiers. Like have a marketplace that only gave me like plus zero point zero four, and then I had a flat bonus of something but I don't even remember what it was but anyway that's not the main point um, and I didn't I didn't have to develop for manufacturers because like I said manufacturers it automatically takes up when you have it there if you have one built in a province that province um, automatically ticks up um, its presence of manufacturers so um, uh, that's it for that. Uh, as for ideas, exploration, expansion, offensive, administrative, and defensive. Offensive, you know, get a better army, basically. Get be able to get better generals, that sort of thing. Administrative, really, for the core creation and the reduction in administrative tech, and defensive because of the morale, the land, the land maintenance modifier, and the um, plus one attrition to enemies. As for policies, I have instituted colonial expansion, which is plus, tw plus 20, global cellular increase, and the colonial administrators. Act Ugh. Sorry, I'm just fucking slurring my words. The Colonial Administration Act, which gives me plus 5% in cellular chance and plus 10 to global, global settler increase, which is also nice. That should help me colonize North America. America much quicker as for stability nothing really interesting on the screen as you can see I have a lot of stuff to core a lot of these are territorial cores that I have to make into states because I have a lot of states um, that I uh, have to uh, I have a lot of provinces that I made into states and I have to core those or a lot of areas that I made into states and I have to core those I have to convert these provinces. I recently was at Worth in uh, not the Netherlands, Norway, and Sweden kind of kicked Norway out of Europe, and they were stuck with these three provinces in North America and land that they had in South America. And I took that. They are left with two provinces here, which I'm planning on taking later as soon as the truce is over. Okay. As for military, I have 130 regiments to 144 force limits and 14 ships to 122 naval force limits. As you can see, I haven't really been focusing on the Navy, been focusing on getting a strong army and being able to um, basically take the provinces I need for the achievement. Um, and the states are as usual. As for the leisure, we can look at total income. I am fourth on this list. Wish that was better, but there's nothing I could really do about that. Um, I realized that the reason that these guys are above me is primarily because of their trade income, like and tariffs for people that have colonial nations. Like my income, my taxation, um, production, and gold income is greater than Great Britain's. He gets his the majority of his money from his trade, or not the majority, but where he beats me is in trade and tariffs. Where in trade, I only get plus 17, and I don't have tariffs because I can't have colonial nations. Um, and the Ottomans primarily beat me because they have higher taxation. Not higher taxation, but they get more money from taxation, a lot more. And they get some trade money, which is understandable. As for treasuries... The uh, the uh, Tuscany, 
Tuscany has a shit ton of money and they're just sitting on it. I guess they, it's not like they can really do anything about it. It's not like they're about to go to war with Ferrara and end up at war with France. And they're allied with no one. And they already built buildings in all of their provinces. Like, there's nothing they can actually do. Maybe just have a large standing army, but there's nothing they can actually do. And they're not about to go to war with Spain. So, that kind of sucks f for Tuscany. Uh, as for development, as, as I told you before, I have the largest development out of all the great powers, and I have the largest development of anyone in the world. It's me, then the Ottomans, then the Ming, then France, then the Commonwealth, and then Spain. Um, they're in sixth. But I do lack in maximum manpower. Oh, my maximum manpower is 74,000. Which is like, I really need to increase that cap because compared to France, France has 201,000 and the Ottomans have 174,000 and Russia has 135,000. So I have to try to um, improve that. As for technologies, like I said, I am abysmal in uh, technologies as of now because I, I have to develop provinces to get the institutions to appear in the new world basically and that takes a lot of points which kind of sucks so i'm kind of very uh, behind like i have 61 techs in total compared to where i should be which is 66 and 67 so what i said 61 right i'm at 61 uh yeah i'm at 61 61 61 compared to 67 66 so like five to six texts behind which is horrible so i'm gonna have to catch up which but i should be able to catch up because my administrate um my administrative words do i use them i'm no i'm not behind the administrative well not that far behind I'm behind in diplo i just need to get these two texts and then get the next three here and i should be caught up i would think i would hope Okay, and as for ideas, I'm not really gonna look down for the ideas. I think I I have it's good enough. I don't know how many ideas do I have. There you go. I have 31 ideas compared to someone with 39 ideas. There you go. Take that. Do with that what you will. As for power projection, I haven't really rivaled anyone, so I don't have much power projection. Um, I get plus 25 automatically for being first ranked great power. That's kind of crazy. That's kind of nice. I'm also surprised no one has plus 50 power projection. Like, it's very plus 50 power projection is plus one in each category, which is really nice. But I guess no one has been able to generate uh, that sort of power projection, which I guess is understandable. Uh, wait, let me go back to that. Okay, no, there's nothing else I wanted to uh, see there. As for score, you can see I'm not really at the top of the list there. I'm kind of far down, but I'm going to get there. Hopefully, I start generating higher score each month but as of now i'm not even generating the highest score and that's because i am not even that good in diplomacy rank but i'm i guess okay in administrative and military i have minus 25 percent there i don't know why that's i don't oh, why is that minus 25 percent i'll figure that out uh, later um okay let's uh go to nope not that one this one go to armies but as you can see i have the fifth largest army but if i was to build up to my fourth limit i would have the fourth largest army so there's that to take into account uh as for total navies like i said i haven't been paying attention to the navy so i'm not even on the first page if i'm gonna want to take over like south america as you can see here i'm gonna have to build a navy to be able to stop Spain and France from bringing their large armies over. So that's going to have to be a priority soon because I would like to start my wars to take over South America by at least 1700. That would be, um, that would be awesome. But I think with that, that's going to be it for this episode. I'm going to just basically say what I want to do. Like I'm probably going to do my next update video in 1740. So by then I would like to at least have half of a, this half, like 
from where my cursor is going up and down to the east colonize done already maybe have taken out these nations in north america hopefully have dealt with these nations in mexico and maybe hopefully have taken out at least britain Brittany, france or spain in north in south america but that's going to be difficult i'm going to really have to militarize very quickly and as you can see by the way Brittany has survived until 1680 um which is surprising i mean they are the independence is guaranteed by france but still but yes they exist just because I'm that, I'm probably not going to pick Brittany because I don't want to go to war with France. I'm probably going to pick Spain to take out first. I do have a border right here where I can take that land from them and that would be great. Whatever at the time works out when it's 1700, I'll do. Or when I decide to go to war. Whatever happens, happens. But with that... That's going to be it for this episode of Europa Universalis 4, The Right of Man. Uh, well, that sounded weird how I said that. Anyway, what I meant to say is that thanks for watching this episode of Europa Universalis 4, The Right of Man DLC. Um, this uh, achievement run, or the first come, first serve achievement run. Um, see you guys in the next episode.